you've got a macro environment that is changing, it's shifting. Inflation is persistent. What does that mean for the ingredients in your recipe? This is Trillion's ETF MasterChef, where we interview the chefs of the finance world on their hottest investment recipes. Welcome to Trillions. I'm Eric Balchunas. I'm Scarlett Fu. Scarlett, uh, who do we have on the show today? Well, our focus is on climate change, and that depends on whether you want to align your investments with your values or you simply think this is a really good way of making money. I thought the best person who fit that bill is Linda Zhang. She is CEO of Purview Investments, and her strategy is the Purview Low Carbon Transition Strategy. Your portfolio here is designed to sort of be like a low fat meal. In other words, instead of fat though, it's lower carbon. Yes. So the, the actual stocks and bonds have less emissions tied to them. Is that right? Absolutely. All the ETFs inside the strategy are either direct enablers for lower carbon economic transitions or they are portfolio low carbon by nature. And is this designed to be the core of somebody's portfolio or maybe something you add on to the core? Some people like to eat all three meals low carb, so <laughs> that's totally cool. Not me. <laughs> and if some people just want to have breakfast uh, or lunch or dinner, they can blend this strategy as part of their uh, investments. Have you calculated how much less carbon is in this versus a traditional portfolio? Yes, the calorie reduction is actually much more than 50%. It's, a, it's about reduction of two thirds of your regular 60-40 portfolio. The biggest reduction actually coming from ETFs such as EcoZ, which is 80% reduction versus S&P 500. So you went for ETFs where the carbon reduction is meaningful. Yes. Do you have any ETF that is not specifically low carbon that just happens to have low calorie count? ARKKR, uh, technology The innovator. famous ARKK. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and that one happens to be super low carbon. It's actually only a 20% of the SPY carbon intensity and the other one is uh, EMQQ. So this is sort of the equivalent of ARKK, but in the context of uh, emerging markets. When I think low carbon ETF, I think you're gonna have a little more tech and a little less energy. Is there more to it than that? You're right, to certain degrees. You know, ChuShare ZecoZ, for example, that's meant to be well balanced. So it actually invests in most sectors, including energies, but not just fossil fuel, but renewable energies. Is this more volatile than say a regular 60-40? Yeah. So as a chef, it's all about how much you put in it, right? <laughs> so some of these ETFs are volatile by itself, but when you put in the meal, it can make the meal uh, achieve its purpose without being too volatile. You've got a macro environment that is changing, it's shifting. The Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, central banks around the world are raising borrowing costs. What does that mean for the ingredients in your recipe? There are actually three risk hedges built in right now uh, based on what's going on in the macro environment. The first one is inflation hedge, right? So we have a bond ETFs and, and we have IVOL, uh, fixed income ETFs. And we also have a rate hike hedgers, which is called FLOT. How do you think about the fact that inflation reigns supreme right now to the point where other ambitions are less of a priority. There are several factors around the world, including inflation and the war, which have pushed the climate concerns and policies on the back burner. But I think those are temporary. Governments around the world, they will have to come back and focus on renewable energies. Let's say somebody uses for the core, they're all in. Do you prep them to say, hey, look, you might underperform the market? Any strategies, not just low, low carb, <laughs> low emission strategies will have the period of underperformance. This strategy is not sold on emotion. Our world economy is going through a transition, new industrial transition, which every single a company in every single sector of the economy are finding new ways to do things. So even if as an investor you don't believe in the green revolution, in clean energy, in a smaller carbon footprint, the fact that uh, companies are moving in that direction and government policy is moving in that yes. direction should make you reconsider that there are financial returns in, in following this trend. Absolutely. So this strategy is not just for tree huggers essentially, it's for anyone who believe who think this is a long-term investment thesis, then, then you, you should uh, think about this. Linda, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your recipe. Thank you for having me. And thank you very much for tuning into this edition of ETF MasterChef. <laughs>